In this edition of Earthlings Unscripted, a Zen story by Andy Shaw. We should be riding big bikes, and that's how we end up both getting motorcycles. Um, this is like 1999, two, year 2000. So that's when we got our first motorcycle. Right. Yeah. And then, um, and then a uh, very what, qu- what type was the motorcycle? Well, Eric got a uh, Shadow Honda. It's, it's both our first motorcycle, so we just got some cheap. He got a he got a Honda Shadow. I got a I got a Honda '86 Honda Super Sport. Mm-hmm. I fix it up, riding around, and all of a sudden I realized that this is all I want to do is to ride motorcycle. I love this thing. I love the lifestyle. I love the open road, you know. But I was riding locally because I was a fairly inexperienced rider. Sure. But within a few months after we got the motorcycle, Eric, my buddy Eric, one day was like, listen, we don't know what we're doing here in New York. Our band just broke up. We're in the Banco Metro style. We just broke up. We're kind of in a limbo in New York City. What should we do? And then Eric's just like, hey, listen, do you want to take our motorcycle and ride across country? And I was like, what? I barely knew how to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> but sure, why not? Let's do it. So within months, we quit our jobs. We sold everything. And uh, uh, we left our apartment. And we just took off in August 2001, right. we took off to begin my biggest trip, you know, go riding my motorcycle cross country. We we're going to camp and, and just visit all the national parks along the way. So uh, that, that was the plan. You know, also, more importantly, we, since we don't know what we're doing in New York City, we're hoping that this motorcycle trip could, could, could give us the opportunity to, to see, the, see the world, see the country, and also to, uh, to find something out of this. You know, get a meaning out of all this. Right. We, don't, we didn't know like what we were doing. Like spiritually, yeah, like internally, yeah. 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 So moving forward, we're traveling for a couple of weeks. I was getting really comfortable. I, I love riding the motorcycle. I love the open road and, and the freedom. You know, we're just having a blast. We're camping everywhere, seeing all the different national parks, you know, seeing unbelievable things. And then one day we're at the Yellowstone Park. We just got there. It's a breathtaking park, you know, and I would just in awe with everything. I was riding my bike, you know, I was following Eric and we're at this pretty whiny and twisty road, but not fast road, but we're just, you know, twisting around and I wasn't paying attention. I just started looking around, looking at trees, trying to find animals and all of a sudden, really, really quickly out of nowhere, I noticed that, oh shit, this turn is coming really fast and I wasn't ready for it. So immediately I tried to counter steer, I tried to turn and right away I knew it was too late. So all of a sudden I just slipped out and my bike just went tumbling down the road and it happened so fast within seconds then the only thing i remember is that i got up slowly and my arm i could see my skin peel off my entire arm i was bleeding everywhere and I, all i remember is that i wobbled my way to my motorcycle which is like 20 feet away and i picked up the motor uh, pick up the, the cigarette and i just light up a cigarette and just try to absorb the shock right now and then uh so long story short eric came back and then and we decided to uh keep keep bandaged me up at the bathroom yellowstone park we, we kind of banged that motorcycle back together and we go to the yellow pages. This is in 2001 and we, we didn't have smartphones. So we found the nearest bike shop, which is in Jackson Hall, Wyoming, right. 100 miles away. And we're like, let's do it. I got to fix my bike. So, you know, I was very bruised up, but, you know, I got on my bike and rolled very slowly through Yellowstone Park, through Grand Teton National Park, and finally arrived at Wyoming, which is a beautiful little ski town. Right. You know? And we got there in the summertime, you know, so it's beautiful there. And um, we went to the bike shop, and um, I tried to fix this bike, and that guy was like, you're crazy to ride through all the national parks with this bike. This bike, it's almost beyond repair. You, you know, like, the parts would take forever to come in, you know, like, you, I, don't, I can't really fix this for you. I was very disappointed. I didn't want the trip to end, and I feel bad. Like, I didn't want to mess up Eric's trip, too. So I looked around, trying to see what I could do. Then all of a sudden, from the corner of my eyes, I saw a brand new Triumph motorcycle sitting on a showroom, in the showroom. And I was like, should I? Maybe I should. So I took my wallet, I gave him my credit card and bought the motorcycle. I totally maxed out my credit card. I just, I was so desperate to continue my trip. Right. Because like this is the first time I've ever done anything like this where I'm just camping, seeing the world, meeting interesting people, eating like hufu, discovering culture. It was too important. Yeah. It, was it was too important. important. It doesn't yeah. matter. I, it doesn't I, matter. So I maxed my credit card and bought the Triumph motorcycle on the spot. Also, I always wanted to have a motor- Triumph motorcycle anyways. So, uh, so it, it was a happy ending for me, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, I got this new bike, you know, so that night, Eric and I went to celebrate uh, uh, the continuation of our trip. So we went to downtown Wyoming, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We went to a bar, we picked a random bar, you know. Yeah. And uh, as I was coming in, I saw the door guy. Uh, the time is okay? I, yeah. yeah. I saw the door guy, and he was my buddy from college that I hadn't seen in years. His name is Dave. 
and this is important because because I'll tell you later. And uh, and I was really happy to see him. He was happy to see us. You know, he offered his place for us to stay for the night. And we're like, cool, man. We got a place to stay. I got a new motorcycle. Life is good. We went in for a couple of drinks and dinner, and I was a little buzz, but not drunk at all. Just a little buzz, you know. Right. But I was also very injured from um, uh, from the accident. I was wobbling, you know. Like I was, you know, uh, limping. And uh, I was hurt, Bruce, and I uh, and also got this brand new motorcycle that's loaded up with 50 pounds of bags. You know, it's really high and, and it's really off balance, you know, and I'm not, I wasn't used to riding this bike. So as I was pulling out of the parking lot, mind you, I had the first accident the night before. Mm -hmm. So this is the second night. So I was pulling out, out of the parking lot and I, you know, pulled the clutch, went, went to the first gear and just turned my bike and all of a sudden my bike just flipped and landed on my leg. And I just heard quick, quick, like that. And I, I just cr crush and just crack all my bones on my leg the very next day. So I, I, I basically, it's a compound fraction. I broke my tibia and fibula. I just crack clean in half, you know? And uh, at the very moment, it's a very profound moment because I, it's first time, no, maybe second time in my life that I, I saw something. I was like, okay, this is going to fucking change my life. Something like my life just went psh, sideways, you know? like. And I, and I just turned slowly to Eric, and my face was pale. You know, I was like, "Look, I'm really sorry, but like the trip is over. Like I'm I'm done." You know. So uh, yeah, so that was a very sad moment for me. And then I and he rushed me to the hospital. I was in there for for days. They told me that I may lose my legs. You know, but but luckily Jackson Hole is a it's a ski town. It's kind of a rich town. So right. there's a lot of top surgeons because they're dealing with ski injuries. Right. So I had a top surgeon, Dr. Nicholson. She saved my leg, you know, so I was I was out of the hospital maybe like after a week But I was I was like fucked up. I was I was sick, you know, I was weak, you know I couldn't walk at all. They gave me crutches, you know, and I just I, I was just paralyzed useless, you know And uh, so so uh, when we got out of the hospital, we ended up staying with my buddy Dave Luckily, we saw him at the bar, you know, I haven't seen him prior in years But we saw him at the bar, so he put us up. So we're staying at Dave's place uh, all together for like a little bit over a month and in the month Eric got a job, you know, and he was supporting me and all I could do I lay on the couch for a month straight, you know, I couldn't move at all and I, oh wait, wait, another interesting story before that actually I forgot to tell you this um, So after my accident Eric waited a few days Because he didn't want to shock my family and friends so he, he waited a few days and then when he called to, to finally bring them the bad news It was like 9-11 just happened, you know so yeah, so everyone's like, oh, Andy, but New York City is being under attack, you know, and 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 it, so like yeah, it was a really really dark moment of my life because because I, oh I, I I was broke, my uh my leg was broken, I was in Wyoming, you know, st squatting in someone's place, you know, and I and I had only had a motorcycle on me, and I was dragging my buddy Eric down, you know, I was just in the very dark, you know, phase of my life. I didn't know what to do, you know. And simultaneously, nine eleven happened. Yeah. Nine eleven was happening yeah, in New uh, York City. Uh huh. Yeah. Simultaneously. I'll show you the, the x-ray later. It says 9-11 on it. Uh, 2001. Uh, oh, we need a picture of that for the podcast. Thank well, you. Well, I have a Don't worry. So, so we, we stayed there for a month. Eric was working. You know, he was taking care of me. I was depressed, severely depressed, uh, not knowing what to do. And then, uh, and, then, and then come October, it's starting to get cold fast there. Like snow is coming. So we got to make a quick choice because we can't be. Once snow comes, we only have motorcycles. We're going to be stuck there. So we gotta make a quick choice. So he was like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll figure something out. You know, but, but, but so he basically asked me, he's like, Andy, what do you wanna do? Like right now, you have two options. Well, you either go home or we could perhaps keep going, right?